Hey guys, welcome back to this course and we're now on lesson two and hopefully you've managed to get that 12-8 groove pretty much into your soul. <laughs> so, you know, keep going with that, keep working with that. We're now gonna dive straight in and start breaking down the track that I've put together for you. So we'll take the concept of the 12-8 but add all the really cool stuff over the top. And we start with bar one, to four and I'm really excited to say that we're gonna bring in some nice chord extensions here straight away. So we're dealing with ninth chords and 13th chords straight away. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. Hey guys, if you just joined us, then don't forget you can get all of the write-up, you can get the tab, you can get the fretboard diagrams and everything else over on the website absolutely free. Don't forget to leave us a comment on any of the videos. Let us know how you're getting on. Give us any questions you've got about the content. Please also like and subscribe as it massively helps us spread the word about these videos. Okay then guys, so what I want to do now to start with is just play bars one to four for you. And I'm going to play it free time and then I'll play it with the drums. So it sounds like this. So count of six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there we go. That was bar one to four. Okay, so that's where we're kind of getting up to. Okay, so essentially bar one is the root chord, bar two is the four chord, and then bar three and four is the root chord again. And that's what we're going to be working with. So as we go through it, I'm going to show you the chord shapes that we need and the theory behind that. Now, we start with this simple... That, okay? Nothing super special going on there, except that really nice little hammer-on the, from the flat third to the major third. Now, we've talked about that in Blues Essentials 1, and you'll notice that I've gone from, in the previous lesson, kind of holding this B7 chord like that, to very much holding it like this, okay? What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm literally playing the root with my thumb. I'm, I'm barring the, the seventh fret, so that will be the uh, seventh fret on the D, G, and B string with my first finger. Now, for you theory guys out there, and I, and I suggest you all become theory guys, that means that I've got a root, a flat seven, a flat third, that's like a minor chord, and a fifth, okay? So if I just played that, you know, this minor kind of sound. So when I take my second finger and I hammer it on to the major third, so that's the eighth fret of the G string, I go from that kind of minor third to major third, and it just gives it that cool little bit of tension and resolution. So I always tend to gravitate towards that rather than just... If you hate the thumb over the top, don't worry about it at all. You can still achieve the same thing with this bar chord. Just hammer that on. You see, I'm just hammering that second finger on. However you get there, that's the kind of sound we want to achieve. And we'd have nothing on the high E string, nothing on the A string. Okay? There's other ways. If you prefer to play the chord like that, you know, without the bar, then you can kind of just slide that in. There's so many little options. You know, I don't want to restrict you guys by saying you have to do it like that. The main thing is just that little extra kind of concept of, rather well, than just playing the chord, doing that little hammer on from the flat third to the third, or a little slide, just to give it something a little bit extra. That's all we're trying to work with here. So for the first six, eight beat, we're just simply going one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, okay? Now then, we're gonna be adding in a B9 chord. Okay, and that looks like this. Okay. So let's just talk about what is a B9 chord. A B9 chord is, in theory terms, it's your root, your third, 
your fifth, your flat seven, and then your nine. And all, all the nine is, is the, um, um, is the second up an octave. Okay, so if you think about it in terms of a major scale, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And instead of saying, instead of saying eight, you could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You know, you could just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, but the reason we say nine is because it's deliberately up an octave. You know, it's 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 not adding the second. Okay, is having the chord, which is a B7 chord, your root, your third, your fifth, your flat seven, and putting a nine on top of that. Think of it like a color note, a, a, a kind of melodic note that you add to the top of the chord to give it a little something something, okay? And in, a crucial thing to understand when you're doing chord extensions like that is that it is an extension of the same family. So we're still playing a dominant chord. And what makes it dominant is that major third and flat seven. So as long as we've got the major third with a flat seven together, we've got a dominant family. Then we're just simply adding to that or taking away. Like for example, we might not need the fifth. We might not need to have that in there, okay? But in this instance we do, and we've also got that ninth on top. Okay, so it just it's still a dominant chord. So it's just you can just chuck it in anytime you want. You know, you might want to do the whole 12 bar with nine chords. You can do that if you want to. You might want to chop and change, sometimes dominant, sometimes ninth, to create something a bit more melodic, something a bit different. And that's exactly what we've done here. So the first ninth chord shape that we're going to be using is this really, really easy shape to work with. And all I'm doing is taking my dominant seventh chord that I've just shown you, and on top of it, up here on the ninth fret of the uh, high E string, I'm just adding that ninth. Okay, so the C sharp. And I'm just doing that with my little finger. And I've got that lovely uh, ninth chord. Okay. So you're gonna want to kind of fret that. Again, you can fret it you know, with the bar chord adding it there or if you if you play like that you can add it there however you do it just kind of get that chord in there okay that's the first one we're going to be learning and this is kind of the second half of the first bar we're just going to simply go one two three four so we're just going to strum the whole chord listening for that sound on top and then attacking it again okay so the first bar apart from one little thing is this one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So just spend a second just kind of practicing that, getting that chord shape down. The theory stuff, you know, let that kind of sink in. We'll be talking about that more and more. You know, whenever you're dealing with chord extensions, it's important to understand the family they're in. And this is a dominant chord. So it can be generally applied anytime you see a dominant seventh you could put a ninth or a thirteenth. The more you add, the higher the number, the more kind of jazzy it sounds, the more chilled, the more, um, I don't know really the right word, jazzy for me is the right word, you know, it just has that little bit of an extra something, melodically, so I really like it. So there we go. Now, at that point, we're gonna go into bar two like this. Okay, so this is a really cool concept. First of all, let's just talk about this chord here. We go into the E and we play on an E7, except we're, we're, we're kind of adding that ninth again, so we're playing an E9, okay? Now in this position, on the A string, the ninth chord is played like this, okay? So let me kind of just walk through this for you. You've got your root note, your major third, you've got your flat seven, so that brings our, that's our dominant chord, and we've played that a lot in the previous course, so that's the dominant chord. Then we need to add this note here as our ninth, okay? Remember the ninth is the second, so run two, up an octave, and that gives us our E9 chord. Now all I'm doing when I flatten my third finger like that is also playing the fifth on top. So I've got everything in, I've got root, third, flat, seven, nine, and a fifth. Now, 
Very important to understand that as you're adding more notes, so ninths, elevenths, thirteenths, you can remove some notes underneath. And the first note that you'd probably want to remove is that fifth. So I don't have to play by any means that high note there, okay? In fact, a lot of people play the ninth chord just like this. If you hate that bar, if that bar really feels awkward to you, then just, just play it simply, you know, second finger, first finger, third finger, and little finger. And don't play either of the E strings. And that's your E9 chord. Again, that chord can just be, you know, D9, C9, all the cage chord stuff that we love. Um, I'm going to be playing it like this, and, and I would recommend trying to do it like this, because it will give you more options going forward. Doing it like that, rather than you, could it kind of just freeze up a finger, essentially. Um, but honestly, it, it, it's always different for every single student, so don't worry. Whatever works for you right now, go with that, okay? So, that's the ninth chord. And that's the chord we're going to be using in this, in this bar. We're going to be coming back to that chord a lot. So make sure we learn this chord properly. Um, how we get to that is a really cool concept because we've gone like this. And I'm sure you've all seen that and heard that. And I wonder if we can really just talk a little bit about the theory behind that. And I like to keep it devastatingly simple. <laughs> the simpler the better in my mind. And all it is in my mind is just tension and release, okay? And tension and release, there's no better kind of pill for that than a chromatic, a semitone up or a semitone down. Literally, you, you cannot get further away from an E9 chord than by going one semitone up. Every note has gone up by one semitone. So it couldn't be more out, more dissonant. Imagine if I just went from that B7 and then I went to the the F. I mean, it's just wrong on every single level. But using it as a chromatic, so knowing that it's wrong, knowing that it's out, knowing that it's creating a lot of tension, and then resolving that tension to the right place by simply coming down a semitone is super powerful. You've got the most tense version of the chord, and you just drop it down into that final chord, okay? And have a listen to the effect of that. Just really settles in. And if there's one word or one kind of phrase that I'd use to describe blues music, it's tension and resolve, okay? And we're always looking, so can we create a little bit of tension and then can we resolve it? And in essence, the blues music never fully resolves. It just goes round and round these 12 bar, these dominant chords. So it's a beautiful kind of way to get into that kind of style. So theory wise, that's all we're doing. We're creating, a, we're kind of taking the chord, we're going up or potentially down chromatically, in this case up, creating that tension and then releasing. Okay. So let's just kind of go through this uh, so far. So what we've got is we've got this one, Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay. So notice that on the bar six, on beat number six of the first bar, I hit that chromatic, so that F9. Drop it down to the E9 on bar one of, on beat number one of bar number two. So one, two. Three, four, five, six, and then back to that familiar rhythm, okay? As we develop that bar, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna hit that first beat again, one, two, three. But then I'm about to come back to bar number one. I'm about, no sorry, <laughs> I'm about to come back to chord, the root chord of B. So again, I'm gonna create some tension that I want to resolve. And I'm gonna do it by going like this. All right, so I'm simply going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Okay, so what is this? What is this? I hear you say, what is this? What is this? This is one of my favorite chords ever, and this is a 13th chord. Okay, so we've done a ninth, we know our sevenths, hopefully. 
Um, and now we're adding a thirteenth, all right? And now, in theory, to add a thirteenth, you have a root, a third, a fifth, a flat seven, a nine, an eleven, a thirteen. All of these numbers, rah, everywhere. And if I'm a pianist, you know, yeah, I've got ten, I've got ten digits. I can get all of those in across maybe a couple of octaves. As a guitarist, not so much. You know, it's going to sound crowded. There's, there's physically no way to do it with the amount of fingers that I, I have to use. Um, so what we tend to do is we we kind of we target the specificities specificities of what we're trying to get. So if we're trying to get a thirteenth, a dominant thirteenth chord, we have to know our theory. We know that we're going to need the major third and the flat seven alongside the root to make it sound like a dominant chord. Fantastic. Then, all we actually really need to add is the 13. So, so what's the 13? So, uh, if I go through my major scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? So, 13 is my G sharp, okay? which is there. So, it's the sixth note, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, again, up an octave. So it's not just adding in a six, it's the dominant chord with the third flat seventh and then bringing in the 13th. Now, that would give you a perfectly valid 13th chord, dominant 13th, root, third, flat seven, 13. You can also add the ninth if you want to, that's an option. Remember your ninth is still up here. That's not moved, so I can add that in too, okay? But that's how you create a dominant 13th chord. So in this instance, where we're going to be doing a, a chromatic up, so we're going to do a C, 13. This is how I play it. So I've got my root with my thumb. You can also do it this way around. Let's do it this way for a second. So I've got my root, my flat 7, my major 3rd, and my 13. Okay. Again, I do it with my thumb. I've got my little finger free and I add it just above. That's the same chord. It's a dominant 13th. I've just got the 9th on top as well. Now, I'm deliberately choosing not to put the 9th on top because I want the highest note of the chord to be the 13th, to really bring that out. Okay? So I'm using this chord shape, which again, you can always use. And in this instance, I'm using it chromatically. So I'm going to go back to the B, but I'm starting with the C. Dun, dun, boom, like that. Okay. So let me just play up to that point. So we've got this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, sorry, the ninth. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's leave it there for this lesson, okay? I think that's enough because there's a lot of theory going on there. I'm going to bring my drum beat in, um, like so, so 60 BPM. And we're just going to work on this particular structure. Now, I want you to go away and get this nailed, okay? So it's knowing the chord shapes, it's knowing the theory behind the chord shapes, and being able to play them in this rhythm, okay? So here we go. I'm going to go around it a few times. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Six, and that will bring us down. Okay, so I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay. Notice that every time I put the chord change or that kind of chromatic bit on a different beat, it has a different effect, doesn't it? So when I'm going from the F9 to the E9, I'm on beat six, which is a quick chromatic change. When I'm going to that um, 13th chord, I'm putting it on beat four instead of the hit, okay? It gives a whole different sound. All of this stuff makes a difference. So let's do it again. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, one. Okay. So there we have it, guys. Try and get that part together, and I'll see you next time for the next couple of bars. All right then guys, so that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to move on to the next lesson, then you can click here somewhere. And if you want to start from the beginning of the playlist, then you can click here somewhere. Remember, please do like and subscribe to the video. It massively helps us spread the word. And do comment, whether it's a question or just some general feedback, we'd love to hear from you guys. See you next time.